everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me here today. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together here for about an hour. Uh, I work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the entire process along the way. So thank you so much for joining me to here tonight, everyone. Uh, so we are continuing on the Milano block from the Orophil block of the month. So this is by, by Blair Stocker. It's for the Orophil a block of the month. Uh, Colors of Italy is the theme. So there's 12 designers and 12 blocks. I get to be July's designer, so I'm excited about that. We are on uh, January, and uh, we started it yesterday. So we have all of our pieces cut out, and uh, uh, we are going to start sewing. We're going to start paper piecing today. Oh, Pam, uh, let us know what's going on. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. We are paper foundation paper piecing this. So I'll show you a pic of what we're working on and then, uh, then we'll get going here. So thanks again, everyone. I'm going to turn you around. All right. There's my bin of fat quarters from yesterday. So here is the block right here. I have, I have it pulled up on my iPad. Uh, so this gray color is going to be consistent uh, within all of, the all of the designer's blocks. They can use it, but they don't need to use it. So, uh, so I'm going to try and use a color here with mine that will be consistent throughout my quilt too. So that's, that's this kind of um, gray stripey stuff here. So we got everything cut out. I don't think I need the outside stripes till, till later. We are gonna be focused on these inner, uh, inner bits. So I'm gonna just shush this away for now. Okay, we have all of these. And I suspect we're going from biggest to smallest, but we'll see. So there's one thing we have to cut out yet that we haven't yet, and that is the four five inch squares of foundation paper that we're gonna be sewing everything onto. So here we go, like we'll be sewing all of our strips onto just a paper base, a paper foundation. Uh, that's why it's called foundation paper piecing. We're actually sewing it to something else to just help it stay sturdy, really, and get everything all nice in a row. So uh, I don't have any specific foundation paper piecing paper, but I do have just some typing paper, just some normal copy paper. So that's what that's what I'm going to use. So this is this is what I've used for foundation paper piecing in the past, and uh, I think it works just fine. And actually, um, it doesn't. I, I'm going to trim this to five inches now, but it doesn't actually have to be perfect. Because the real perfection is going to come as we um, sew it together later. Yes, so Joe's asking, as a designer, were you given any material to base your blocks on? So uh, we were given uh, our month. We were given our year. Oops, I got to fit two, two on the sheet. And we were, not year, we were given our month and our color our color scheme and uh, the color schemes match their block builder or their color builder sets, color builder boxes. Uh, so Orophil is releasing these little three sets of, of thread in like fun colors. So like this, this month is gray. So they have like these three pretty grays uh, and that'll be a different kind of color scheme each, each month. Oh, calling it typer, typing paper instead of copy paper or whatever. <laughs> and we were given a city. So each of these are based on a city in, in Italy. 
which is where the company is based off of. But it's kind of a fun, uh, kind of a fun theme. I think we're getting a lot of neat colors out of it. I'm very excited about the colors and the, and the um, place that mine is. <laughs> so that will be revealed in, in July. I, I've designed the block. So last weekend I did actually, uh, I got the computer out and I have a block designed and I'm really excited about it. So now I have to sew it up and uh, take a nice photo of it. I think, I, I don't know if I have to send it in or not, but I do have to take at least a nice photo of it. So I'm not cutting mega perfectly. Again, when we, uh, I can't, I don't think I can say anything yet, John. <laughs> might be even too much that I said July. I don't think so. I think it might have even mentioned that already. But uh, when we f cut these out at the end to five inches, once we have fabric on it, we aren't even going to, we're going to use this as a guide, but we're going to use our rulers to make the five inches perfect. So this doesn't have to be mega exact right now. All right, I am just trimming these all out. So uh, I think the general consensus in foundation paper people in paper piecing world is that this uh, copy paper is fine, but a little lighter weight thing might work a little bit better. I know some people have mentioned a phone book um, using phone book pieces. Next time we get a phone book coming, we get them every once in a while. I'm going to, I'm going to save it for that. I'd like to give it a try. I haven't used anything other than, than, uh, the, the paper, the, uh, typing paper. When you design a quilt block, are you using a specific program? For me, I am just using Adobe Illustrator. So I'm come from like, the graphic design illustration world where Adobe products are king, basically. Uh, so I've used Adobe products forever. There are, there are programs that help design blocks like, what is it? Q7 or quilters? What is it? I think it's just called Q7. Uh, it's a quilting program and, uh, when was the last time you said you wanted a phone book? Yeah, I don't know. They just send them every once in a while. But so that that program is out there. But for me, I just know Illustrator. The nice thing about Illustrator is I can uh, just click a button and type in the size of a square that I want. Everything will be perfectly rectangle and perfectly measured. And I like getting that perfectly measured thing. I mean, I doodle it on a piece of paper first, and then I try to tweak it and get proportions right on the computer and then I've separated all the pieces out from there like a puzzle piece and now I'm going to try and figure out what's the best way to cut this oh EQ7 all right that's it Bonnie I, electric quilters EQ all right that's what it is EQ7 uh I, I thought just thought I was missing something in there <laughs> all right yeah EQ7 so I know a lot of people like using that all right um so, all right, we're, we're that, we got that done. Okay, so we can start the foundation paper piecing. So it looks like we're going from the biggest to the least. So I might actually just line up my papers like that, my fabric like that, just to do it. A, B, C piece. And then follow the same se sequence ending um, with the smallest fabric C piece. So, all right, yeah, so we're just going biggest to smallest. So I'm gonna just lay them up on the top. So A is first, then B, this seems the next size down, uh, C. This might be in my way, but for right now, I think this will be helpful for me. Okay, and then A, B, C again. Just squish them up, up together. Okay, so uh, in theory, there'll be two of these for each block, except for these. 
So, you know, we'll have them going down this side of the block and then that side of the block, or the, the little these. So what's crazy is that this is going to end up all scrunching into like half of one of these pieces of paper. So that's just kind of crazy. So I'm going to take, all right, there's just four of these. I'm going to scooch all these up. I think, oh my gosh, look how much excess we have. We have so much excess. Well, that's good. We can't screw this up then. All right, so I'm going to take this off. And instead of doing one block at a time, I am going to do, uh, I'm going to do all of them all at once because I think it's going to speed up this process a little bit. All right, so I think we just make all four the same. I, I've read these instructions. So we're going to put the first one on the diagonal. And then we're going to just keep foundation paper piecing directly to it. So fabric B, press open, um, fabric C, and then the same color sequence. Next, repeat the piecing sequence on the other half. Yeah. Just reading ahead quick. All right. Yeah, so that's that should be fine if we do them all at once. So we'll start off with the first one. So this has to be exactly in the middle here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I can kind of see through my fabric. What I could do is maybe, maybe this would be a little helpful. I'm going to just fold the diagonal. I suppose a pencil would have worked too. And then I just might fold this in half just to get a little crease, know what's halfway. And then this, this as well. Okay, so we are going to put this face up. I'm going to line up those kind of little folds that I just put in here. And I am going to glue this first piece down. So with foundation paper piecing, I find that it's always a little bit easier for piece number one, which is this, uh, before we start sewing, to actually glue it down. So I have this little kind of sew line glue thing. It's just basically any glue stick, any like Elmer's glue stick will work. But I'm just going to put a dab of glue right on this diagonal. Line up those diagonals again. Gosh, I might go in the middle too. Let's put three on here. We're going to take this off relatively quick. So I don't have to worry about that glue staying too long. So lining up those fold lines again. Might be time for a new uh, new glue stick soon. This does not seem like it's sticking very well. So I am going to glue the other ones, but let's let's just uh, do this first one. I'm going to grab now from the next layer down, or the next size down. And what we're really going to do now is we're going to put right sides together just like that. And now we are going to sew along this piece here. And once it's sewn, that first glued piece will stay on. So that's just why I'm like, yeah, let's get that on quick here. All right. And then, then actually I will do the other ones before moving on to the next step. It's just making me paranoid that glue. So a couple things that we need to do when we are doing foundation paper piecing as far as the sewing machine. Uh, we want to make our stitch length a little skinnier. And what that's going to do is, is it's going to poke more holes in the paper because, you know, we have a smaller stitch length, so it's going to make more stitches. So that makes more holes. That will make up more of an easier perforation. Uh, so a bunch of holes in paper is like a, perf a perforated paper. So that's how we're going to get the paper off is from all those holes. So what I need to do is over here, I need to just make my stitch length a bit smaller. So I'm going to have a lot of skinnier, uh, skinnier bits here. All right. Wow, you guys, it feels like we haven't sewn forever. I mean, we've been embroidering, um, getting other projects done, I guess, but no sewing. Oh, I know why, because we've been doing that foundation paper piecing as well. All right, let's get these 
sewn together. All right, I am, I'm gonna put a little reverse stitch in here, just to lock that stitch for now. And I am just following that edge. Ooh, wow, those are really small stitches. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger. are still really small. Okay. I don't need to be them to be so tiny that we're hardly moving. All right. I think they're still awfully really small. We'll take this one off just to look at it, but then the other three I'll do together. Man, it feels like I haven't had the machine out in a while either. Okay, so you can see these stitches are really, really small. They don't need to be that small. Actually, all of these seem really small yet. I'm gonna just uh, turn the dial up a little bit. But there we go. So now when we open this, we have our first two two rows there. And actually, at this point, now that now that that it's sewn, I can remove that glue which is really easy because I think that glue sticks kind of dead. So, all right, then we don't want that still sticking. So I'm gonna do that for the other three and then we'll cruise through the rest of the process here. We still have to press it, but I wanna do that all at once once I have the other three available. So this guy's done. Uh, let's, let's glue all three of these at once and we'll line them up. So three. That guy can go there. Oh, let's let's do that fold again. That was actually helpful for me, I think. Just to have that diagonal line. And I'm kind of bending it back. I don't need it to actually bend. I just want to see that diagonal. Like I said, a pencil would do the job too. Oh, we keep wiggling a little bit here. Oh yeah, so you guys, it is, uh, it is February on Saturday, which means a new block of the month, or a new embroidery of the month, I should say. So, uh, the mandala love, like that pretty mandala that everyone's posting in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, that's gonna go away late Friday night, so like midnight on Friday, and then the new pattern will be available on the 1st. So it's going to be available uh, right away. It'll take me like a minute to take down the one and then I'll put up the other. All right, again, I'm just kind of getting a little fold in here. All right, let's get the glue stick down on this paper right away. Oh gosh, yeah, look, I have nothing on there anymore. I think I do have an extra, like an older glue stick laying around here. I really only need it for these first three pieces. Lining up those diagonals. All right, that guy's done. <laughs> uh, I, I, you'll have to see on, on uh, Saturday morning early. But I have bundles all ready to go. So uh, this last time bundles sold out in like the beginning, the early morning of the third day. So uh, just keep that in mind that you'll probably want to try and get a bundle on the first or second day. I made a few more than last time, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, it's your husband's birthday too, fun. All right, one more to prep. And we'll sew this one, this bottom one right away. Yeah, I think adding this little fold in here is definitely helping and 
after this part. The first one, the first piece you sew on for a foundation paper piecing is always a little different, always a little weird with the glue and everything. But after this, every single out, every every um, other single piece is gonna be treated exactly the same. We're just gonna sew it to the one before, uh, press it open, and that is it. All right, look at these three um, fabrics. How different they ended up looking. But it's the same fabric, it just has the different patterns in it. I think that's gonna be kind of neat. This is gonna just have that one little line of black flowers in it. All right, let's sew, oh, I guess we need, we need our pieces. Let's line those up right away too. Oh, I keep hitting him. All right, so right sides to get together. I'm still kind of just centering it on that paper. You can do all these one at a time, and if you have a small workspace, maybe that's a good idea. Um, but I really find it a lot faster doing them all at once like this. And actually, my, my iron is nearby. This is going to be a process of place, so iron, place, so iron. It's going to be like this little circular thing that we keep doing here. So... Um, to have your cutting area or your work area, your sewing machine, and your uh, your iron in nearby is going to be just really kind of nice for foundation paper piecing. So, all right, back to the machine. Okay, let's get these new pieces. Again, I don't, my glue isn't holding all that well, so I'm being a little careful. But we have those edges lined up. And we can just start. All right, I am gonna just do a little back stitch here again. Again, I'll just put a little back stitch. I don't think we actually need to do that. And I'm gonna actually just continue on to the next piece. So I'm gonna just kind of veer off to the side. I think that's okay. And we will just start up the next piece right away. I think we can just kind of tuck all this under. I suppose we could just stitch it on top. There we go. one and then all of these will be attached so now we won't have to deal with glue anymore we're done with all that so it seems like it's slowing down quite a bit when I put the paper on okay so I I just upped the pressure on the machine there's that button on the top that uh, pushes the foot down harder and now it's now it's grabbing that paper a little bit better. Okay. That is that. Let's get over to the sewing or the uh, the iron now. So we're gonna push over to here. I have my little pressing mat. Uh, actually, we can just, I'm gonna just bring that up here. Yep, Tracy, I am just using regular, uh, regular office, um, I keep wanting to say typing paper, but copy paper, that's what they, that's what they call them these days. Yeah, um, I think it's maybe a little bit thicker than what is usually recommended, but I, this is all I've used and it seems to work fine. So, okay, I'm going to bring my pressing mat up here just so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm going to go like that. Okay. So we, I'm removing that glue. So all I'm gonna do is press that seam. 
right under the paper and everything. And then I'm going to open up that top piece and press it over. So just like how you would normally uh, print your paper, that's what, what it's called. Um, this is just how you would normally kind of press a seam. The only difference is you got that paper attached at the bottom. And that's it. That is all there is. And then we're going to sew the next piece on and the next piece and the next piece. And that's, that's the deal here. That's the whole entire process is that. So let's, let's cruise through the rest of these. And again, I think I'm going to do all of these all at once now, all four, kind of how we're doing. It's going to speed this whole thing up. Let's see if we can finish a whole side tonight. That would be awesome. That might be asking a lot, but maybe we'll see. I always kind of give it a press to set the scene. The set the scene. <laughs> set the seam. I thought that sounded goofy. Let's set the scene here. All right, and last one. And when I'm doing multiple pieces, I always like doing the same motion in the same way, and I lay them the same way when I'm done, and uh, uh, then it's less confusing later. Everything's exactly in the same position. I can just grab the next piece and put it on without thinking much. Um, I like doing it that way. All right, there we go. Grab all of our pieces. Let's get rid of this guy. And uh, I'm rotating them all because the next piece is the C, this, this guy right here, this dark color here. So I'm going to just lay them right here. Actually, I only need four. There's eight because we need to do the other direction yet. So there we go. And I'm going to just grab as I go. So I'm going to grab the first piece and uh, lay this on. And then we're going to sew right away. Because all I need to do is um, kind of center it on the square again on top of the next piece with right sides together. So, and then we're done. And I'm going to just grab and go for the rest of them. So to the machine, we'll be jumping up and down here a little bit for this foundation paper piecing, but that's okay. All right. Get those edges lined up. We're good to go. So this is nice when you have this uh, foundation paper piecing, this strip piecing on um, the paper is nice when you have pieces that are so little like this. It just kind of makes the process a bit easier. Next. This one. I'm having kind of a hard time keeping it in line with the, keeping like the edge of my foot in line with it. You like this kind of paper piecing? Yeah, this is nice. So I'm not sure we've actually done this type of like strip piecing like this on, on here before on my Facebook lives here before. We've done foundation paper piecing, but that's when all the lines are drawn on the paper and we gotta like do all these like intricate designs and stuff. This is just nice. We have no, no like lines at all on here. So it's a little, it's like a free form foundation paper piecing, which is kind of, kind of a neat idea. This is actually a great, I've, I've seen people um, do this method for using up scraps. So one thing I actually read online, someone doing, oops, not for this project, but they just, when they have scraps like this, they have just pre-cut a whole pile of um, pieces of paper the size that they want. And then whenever they have a strip lying around like this, they'll sew it onto it. And uh, then they'll cut out those squares. So they'll have like a whole pile of squares with these strips. The strips are random 
on it, but the squares are all the same size. And I thought that was kind of a neat, a neat idea. I like it. All right, let's get the next piece. Oh, this is our last one already. Great. Oh, your grandma called it string quilting and did a whole quilt out of it. That's awesome. Yeah, I haven't done much with strips and stuff like this. Ugh, let's get situated under here. There we go. I know why I feel uncomfortable. I don't have my stiletto out here helping me along. I always like to have um, this. It's just a, a turkey um, laser <laughs> with some beads on. I, I use that as my stiletto and... I like having it in my right hand here to kind of guide things through a little bit. It's like an extra little pin. All right, we got those four done. Grab my scissors. All right, let's trim these up as our next step and then we'll get that iron out again. Okay, so same deal. I'm gonna give it a little press first. And then we'll open it up and press. Oh my gosh, look how tiny these stripes are gonna be. Look how little it is. <laughs> it's gonna be cute. This is gonna be really, really kind of neat. All right, there's one. But I think it's rewarding doing all four all at once because otherwise I mean you finish one uh quickly in theory if you just do a one all at once but then you got to do three more this way we're kind of just getting it all done oh you made some of those turkey uh lacer stilettos too yeah they work awesome they're just right they're just right I really like like them a lot all right, and you, you don't have to be so perfect with lining these up. Like, see here, I've left a lot of space there and not much there. The only thing we need to do is make sure it gets on this paper. So you can kind of see, I just, I just need it on within this paper and then we're good. So you don't have to worry about how well they're lined up at the top and the bottom. As long as it's covering the paper, you're going to be good to go. This is all going to get trimmed and it's going to magically look perfect immediately. All right, next we have, I suppose I could just leave this here. Let's do that. Um, next up, ah, uh, nah, it's in the way. We have the, this color again, so the letter A. Again, let's grab those four. One, two, three, four. All right, again, I'm going to just take the top and then as I sew, I'll just take the next one and put the right sides together. I'm still eyeballing like what the center of this paper is when I, when I lay the strip on. So I'm trying to get like the two sides equal, but again, it doesn't matter as long as it's both on the paper. All right, cue, let's go through the sequence again. So this is, this is color A again. So this is, this is fun. This is just like a nice, easy process. And we're going to have something that just looks super fancy when it's done just because of how, um, how teeny tiny these lines are going to be. little half inch when they're done they're only like a half inch big here all right 
right, next up. Ooh, that little quilting flip always does this a little funny. All right, here we go. You guys, I'm sewing with my my shoes on too, which is awkward. I should have just taken those off. Uh, I am using, uh, I'm not using the gray thread that they have in the bundle or in the thread bundle. I didn't actually get the thread bundles I, I uh, as a designer. So I don't have all the different threads, but I did have a grayish kind of, it's almost like a taupey gray. Um, that I already had, so I'm just using that. I figured it's a nice enough neutral that it should work with, you know, I don't know, whatever, whatever this quilt ends up being. So that's what I'm using. So when I actually sew my, my block, that's the designer block, when I sew that, I might use um, the thread. So I got one of those. Uh, I got one of those little uh, the three packs, the color builders from Aurafil, and the the three colors match the color of what my quilt block is going to be, which is kind of fun. I'm excited about that. So for that one, I might use those, open those up, and use them. But you guys can win win these too. So I don't know if you saw or if you read on the Orphil page. Um, every month they are giving away three boxes to one person. So I think it's something like, you know, they'll get the January, February, March packs, the winner each month. And then, you know, once they get to later in the year, they'll get those packs. But three whole packs. So that's like $120 worth of worth of thread. So if you're making these blocks, it'd be worth posting it um, on that page just to see if you win because dang, that's that's a lot of nice thread. Um, I think I linked to, to this. Yes. Yeah, so Gretchen, I did link to this project and, and the block and the post about it in in the link here. So uh, on within this Facebook video, uh, or if you look at this Facebook video later in your feed, it'll have it'll have like text that goes with it, and in that it it has links in there. So yes, there should be links for this project, and it's free this project too. So um, if you want to do one block a month and sew with me here, it's just got started. I'm, I'm on day two here. <laughs> I do it the third. We're going to do it, um, sorry, the fourth full week of every month is when I'm going to work on it. And they get released on the 15th of the month. So this was just released last week. Oh, look how pretty. These are going to be cute together. The fun thing about just picking fabrics from my stash, like this is just from my like fat quarter bin. Um, the nice thing is that I'm kind of forced to use what's there. <laughs> so I'm putting together fabrics that if I was in a store, I may never have even thought to put them together. Like, I don't know if I would have ever put this like little dainty flower with this squiggle dark and these dots. I think that'd be a kind of a weird deal, but um, I really like them. So it, it's, it's making me have to be more flexible and and not knowing what will happen and just enjoying what it looks like when it's done. I, I'm, I'm liking that. There's less pressure too, I think, for having like the perfect colors and all that. All right, next up is this dot. Grab my four pieces. The other four again is for when we do that other side. Gosh, but we'll be done because we're doing all four at once. That's exciting. 
once we get that other side done. All right, two more on this side. Ah, we for sure can get this this side done. I thought maybe, maybe we'd get, get this side done, but for sure we are. We got tons of time. You often feel overwhelmed in a store choosing fabric. I do too. So my, when I'm choosing fabric at a store, I mean, I guess there's two different ways. Like if I have a project in mind, then I, I at least have some sort of little plan. I, I at least know, you know, the proportions, the amounts of each fabric that I might need. But if I'm going in blind, to a store, I might find a pattern at the store that I like. Um, but I will pick the fabric that I'm most drawn to, like the most like squee-worthy one that is just amazing and I think is the most beautiful thing ever and oh my god, I gotta buy that. I will get that fabric and then I will work off of that. I will pick colors that kind of go with it. I will pick like some lights and mediums and dark fabrics that go with it. Um, you know, if it has like a tiny yellow flower in it or something, then I might, that might be, um, worth looking at something that's yellow. So I just pick up the cues from that gorgeous, most beautiful piece that I, that I have to get. So that's kind of what I do. And then once I start picking, um, picking a lot of them, picking a bunch of fabrics, then I start just seeing what they look like all together, like on the table. And if I'm like, yeah, this is too yellow, then I'll take one away or I'll add some other color. Uh, so like at that point, I'll work with like the proportions of what they look like together in theory. But it always starts with um, that one amazing fabric that I cannot live without and is so amazing and wonderful. <laughs> and there's always one at, at every store I go into. So that's, that's my process. Pick the prettiest fabric and build from there. The nice thing about that too is you're gonna love working on your project because you get to touch that beautiful fabric every time. Lost something there. Last one, and then we just have that one other piece, and we're done with the first side. That's exciting. Oh, we got some extra scissors. Where are you? All right, I got my paper scissors, so we're using that. That actually might be what fell, is my scissors. Use the big scissors. Whoops. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So a lot of um if you're if you have a fabric that you love at a fabric shop, a lot of the times right on one of the edges, like way on the side, they will have all the colors like in a little circle or something. Um, actually, they almost oh certainly will have this if you look on one of the edges. It'll have the colors that were used to make up the black or the, the fabric. So you could just look at that one little circle and, and um, match whatever other fabric you want with that. Yeah, that's a good way to pick out colors from there too. Oh, this is looking just sweet. Okay. Pressing these, and then we have one more, and then we might even get one sewn on the other side. That'd be cool. Get that process going. All right, I did not snip. 
that little bit of stuff there. So I'm just looking at the picture and it does look like we will have a little bit at the end here. So don't worry about that if you didn't cover that little tip there. It looks like that's on purpose. So I don't think ours is going to reach that far. Yeah, so this is actually quite a bit of ex excess fabric. Um, so there's a lot of leeway to make mistakes on this block because there is a lot of excess, I think. That's kind of interesting sometimes. Sometimes designers will give you a lot of excess and sometimes a designer will give you nothing and it has to be perfect. So it's just kind of interesting working with different designers, projects, like you'll, you'll get different patterns and you'll, you'll see um, designers making different decisions. And that's what's kind of interesting about just these projects that are built from a lot of different designers. Then you can see what you like. You can be like, oh, I really like when they give me a lot of excess fabric that we can trim down. Or man, why did they give me all that? I only need this much. I'm wasting fabric. So there's, it's two different, two different thoughts. All right, last bit. Grab my four. Oh, these dark ones. Oh, this one's the wider one too. So this is the one and a half inch uh, wide one. That's right. So we might actually get close to covering this. We can peek actually. We can lay down here and fold it over. Oh, not quite, but, but almost. I suspect that we're gonna cut these smaller. I haven't read that far along. These are, you know, five inch squares. Maybe we cut them down smaller. I think someone mentioned four and a half inch squares. Maybe, maybe that's why. You like a lot of leeway sometimes. I do too, especially when it's something I haven't done before, or if I'm nervous like I am about cutting things right. I like a little leeway. So I, I'm fine with wasting a little fabric. I mean, I'm not I'm not always throwing this fabric away. Sometimes I'm sewing it into other things and so I'm not I'm not so upset about, about it. Pretty. So we're not going to cut this down obviously until we get the other side done. But I can maybe peek ahead at the instructions. <laughs> 